Hello. Hi everyone. Good evening. So Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome in. Alright, so today is my second session of group coaching when it comes to career. So if any one of you all have any questions, I think this is a good time for you to drop your question in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, I think just a couple of days ago, I covered resume related stuff. So if today, if any of you all have anything you want to ask, I think let's do this tonight. <laughs> All right. Okay. Today I can also cover a little bit about LinkedIn and job search. I think that's something that we can do today if you're interested. Or if you have anything that you think is useful for you, please let me know. All right. So hi everyone, I'm Samantha. I'm a career coach, a career practitioner. So basically what I do is I help a lot of working professionals to achieve career success by equipping them with career related soft skills. Okay, so this is my role today and I'm doing this for the first time is because I believe some of you all may benefit from this session, especially if you're going through a job career transition or you are affected by the very volatile workforce market right now, right? Hi, thank you for the light. Let me do some setting. It's just so weird to keep hearing myself. All right, okay, cool. Ken, this is fantastic. I don't get to hear myself. So weird to hear yourself. <laughs> when you're talking and listening to yourself. Okay, you like spamming likes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Continue spamming. But of course, today my role here is really to help any one of y'all who are in, happen to be scrolling, uh, scrolling through your TikTok and you scroll to my room and you want to get away, uh, learn something, take some tips away when it comes to anything related to your career that may be beneficial for you moving forward. So this is my second session and my last session doing group coaching live at least in the near few weeks. I don't see myself doing it again. In fact, I don't do this often, all right? Um, it's usually private coaching, but I'm opening this up so that I can help as many people as possible in such a volatile time, all right? So if you have anything related to career, uh, you are affected by the pandemic, you are doing a career switch, you are going through a career transition, you are being affected by the massive layoff what, whatsoever, or if you know of anyone who is being who is affected during this situation, I think please share this, please pass the love down. All right, my, here, my, my sole purpose and objective here for the next one hour is to help as many people as possible in my own capacity because day in and day out, I'm a career coach. So basically, I do a lot of um, career-related stuff and maybe my insights might give you some inspiration on what to look out for. All right, so uh, the last session, I actually did something related to resume. All right, so if any one of you would like a recap on resume, please refer to the YouTube video because I've uploaded. So how can you find the video is just go to my profile and you can find my YouTube and just go there and search for the for the live session. All right. Today, I probably want to talk a little bit about job search and maybe using LinkedIn to help you. Okay, so um, anyone who is tuning in, if you do not have a LinkedIn account, I would suggest you to create one LinkedIn account. Okay, and the reason why I would suggest you to have a LinkedIn account is because this is where majority of the recruiters, the talent acquisition, the headhunter or decision makers, you can find them online in that platform. All right? Yes, it's like a social media, but it's a social media where all the professionals unite. So if you do not have an account, I will strongly encourage you to, you know, create one yourself. All right. And over there, not only can you connect with people, you can also search for jobs. 
All right, so uh, I saw a question. I'm taking a career break for three years. Do my previous seven years of IT experience count due to the three years gap? So what you're telling me is that now you have a career gap, right? Okay, so I think it really depends on your current skill set, actually. Hi, Ash. <laughs> okay, it really depends on your current skill set because you mentioned IT experience. So it's not so much about whether is it... Uh, I think importantly, what you need to be able to uh, mention in your resume is that how your past IT experience is still relevant to the job market. All right, so it could be technical related IT knowledge, it could also be domain knowledge, it could also be transferable soft skills. So these are things that you may have to make it a little bit more prominent to your readers who are reading your resume. So that's number one. Number two, that what you want to maybe be prepared to answer is what were you doing during the career gap? Okay, so if let's say you were doing some upgrading, for example, you were doing some sort of upgrading, you were doing some form of volunteering for whatever uh, capacity, right? If you can mention it, I think it's good to include that in your resume as well. What were you doing in the career break? That's number two. Number three, one thing to take note is if you have a career gap, it's important also for you to uh, excellent, you are, you are doing a, a three-year degree, then fantastic. Okay, so what you can do is in your resume, you can mention that that career gap, you were doing a upgrading, all right? You were pursuing a three-year degree. What is the degree about? Fantastic. So put it down in your resume because at the end of the day, what you need to remember is that your resume is a document that sells you before you are given an opportunity to sell yourself, which is AKA during the interview. All right, so in your resume, I would encourage you to put that degree in. You have to put that in, all right? So I believe what will be relevant will be IT experience, transferable soft skills. Even if, let's say, you are moving back into the same similar industry. So maybe previously you were doing IT in healthcare and now you still want to be in healthcare. So domain knowledge is the same, okay? So put it in. Good question. I love questions like this, keep them coming. And if there's anything I can assist you with, fantastic. All right. So I'm doing this for the first time live on TikTok, like a group career coaching session is because of the recent volatility in the market, in the, in the job market. So if you are affected or you know of friends who are affected, please share this along with them and I'll do my very best to answer them. My very first session, which I conducted about three days ago, I have uploaded on YouTube. So if you want to look for resume tips right you can refer to the live session all right so i'm not going to repeat myself so that i can benefit as many people as uh, possible over here okay cool all right so just now when i was uh, before i answer this question i was halfway through linkedin right so i was saying that every one of you if you are a working professional please make sure that you are seen digitally okay whether you like it or not we search for people Okay, you search for people, you look at your interviewers. Likewise, your interviewer may also look at you. So since people is going to look for us, why not create a digital profile whereby we allow, you know, we put up a profile whereby we allow the people to read what we want them to read. So that's how you can take control back. All right, so I'll encourage every one of you all to create a LinkedIn account, set up a professional LinkedIn account. and. Just to let you know, on your LinkedIn account, you don't have to post anything personal, right? It just has to be everything professional. I don't post about my daily life. I, I just don't do that. And LinkedIn is not the platform for you to do that as well. All right, so keep it professional. Now, maybe while waiting for questions to come in, I can actually drop over to LinkedIn itself. All right, so if any one of you are with me today, you can also pop into your LinkedIn. All right, and walk this through with me because I'm doing a very hands-on practice, uh, not even practice, a hands-on demonstration. And this will be very useful for you. All right, so I'm going to pull up my screen and I'm going to make myself smaller. Okay, give me one second. It's... There we go. All right. Okay, so here we are. We are on LinkedIn. So if for any one of you for the first time you haven't seen the LinkedIn, da -da, this is LinkedIn for you. All right. So as you can see, this is your this is your homepage. Okay. <laughs> I'm like walking through. So I'm assuming y'all don't use LinkedIn, all right? So that's why I'm going so slowly. Now, first thing first about LinkedIn. Okay. So uh, yeah. 
you can see that I have this yellow, yellow color or orange color above my profile here. You can see my mouse here. Now, this means that I am on a premium account. Now, because I'm on premium account, right? So the first question that most Singaporeans will ask me is, do I need to pay for a premium account? All right. Now, if let's say at this current moment, I would really strongly mention that it may not be necessary. If let's say you, you just want to watch your cash flow, especially if you're in between jobs, you want to watch your cash, cash flow, LinkedIn premium is not something that you have to pay for. So long as you're active enough on LinkedIn, you, you, don't, have to do, you don't have to have a link, uh, premium account. But if let's say you have done out your profile nicely, okay, and you want to check out the function. So if you haven't activated the trial, that is a 30 days trial period. So use that and maximize the, the benefits and see if it, if it works for you. So basically, premium, uh, LinkedIn Premium allows you to have LinkedIn Learning for free. It allows you to have a certain number of credits, email credits they call, so that you can private message someone else who is also a premium account. All right. It allows you to view more, uh, unlimited profile views. Okay. It allows you to also look at company insights. All right, so these are some of the these are some of the things that comes with LinkedIn profile, uh, LinkedIn Premium. All right, so you mentioned uh, someone say, okay, you, okay, I can vet your LinkedIn. Sure, if you give me your LinkedIn profile and you don't mind everyone seeing your LinkedIn profile, I'm more than happy to vet your LinkedIn. All right, so if you want me to vet your LinkedIn and you're open to everyone who's streaming here to see, just drop your username or, or the URL. All right. Okay, now, since I'm on LinkedIn, all right, so I just give a quick introduction about LinkedIn, right? So if you are with me, okay, all of y'all, you can go to this thing called view your profile, all right? So just take a look, view your profile. So just click on view your profile. Okay, so over here, you can see that I have my own design banner, okay? So whether you want to have your design banner or not, it's up to you. If you, if let's say you are in a design background, Okay, if let's say you are in UI UX, okay, maybe you may want to use this as a, as a way to showcase your UI skills, right? So maybe you will want to do that. All right, otherwise, you can just use the default setting, which is fine. Okay, now you need to understand that anything with a pencil here, you can see, right, there's a pencil mark here that looks like a pencil. It's obviously for you to edit. Okay, so what you can see here is my name. Okay, and you can see this thing that I've highlighted is called my headline. Okay, so can you all see? This is a headline. The headline says I, I aspire to be da, da 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 Okay, so this headline will be something that you want to include. If let's say you're actively searching for jobs, right? This is where you want to put in functional words, functional key skills. So Things like rank is not important. So you don't need to mention things like I am, uh, you don't need to mention like senior manager. Okay, so senior and manager is not important because senior manager has no meaning. But you may want to talk about more functional key skills like business development. Okay, business development is a skills. You may want to talk about, um, you may want to talk about UI UX, that's what I was talking about. You may want to talk about Photoshop. Okay, all these are skills. So what I would encourage all of y'all to do is for your headline, put in functional skills. Reason being is for anyone who for any recruiters, right, when they are searching for people, whatever that they put in the search bar, they will be putting in keywords. Maybe they will be looking for software engineer, maybe they will be looking for project engineer, maybe they will be looking at project manager. All right, so these are keywords. All right, so you want to put meaningful and purposeful word there, which is what people usually search for. All right, so this is what I meant by the headline. Okay, and of course, you can see that this is um, your profile picture. Okay, so you have this thing called add a frame. So adding a frame, you can see that this is original. This is open to work. Okay, so if you are okay to let everyone in your network knows that you are open to work, do that. Okay, now if you see anything like this, which is a purple line, it just means that they are hiring. Now this function was created by LinkedIn in during pandemic itself. All right, so if this is something that you're looking out for, you can actually change your frame so that people know that you're open to work. Now you can also see that I have a, I have this, I have this like invisible 
think around my profile and if you click on my profile you can see that there's a view profile video so basically what it means is that I actually created a 20 second pitch for myself so if someone view my profile video they can actually hear me talk all right and you can also see there's a little audio function here can you see next to my career futurist now these two functions that I just mentioned if you want to create them you can do so and but the only thing is you can only do so via your app, your phone app okay so you need to download LinkedIn app on your phone and use your LinkedIn app to do the recording to upload it via desktop itself it doesn't work okay all right so I'm okay to vet your LinkedIn right so long as you give me the URL or have you not given me if you haven't given me then I can't help you vet all right, any one of you want me to want me to help you vet your LinkedIn profile? I can do that if you don't mind everyone looking at your profile for sure. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so this is uh, just a quick introduction about the headline. So put in functional key skills, uh, words that people will search for when recruiters are searching for people. Okay, the next thing that I may want to introduce you is this thing called the about. Can you all see there's this thing called the about? Alright, so when you talk about, it's really talking about an introduction of yourself. Okay, so this is a good time for you to maybe write a paragraph or maybe maximum about two paragraphs that describe you, your skills, uh, the value that you can bring to the organization. You can even address the market audience, the target audience that, you're, that you usually work with. Okay, you can also include call to action. Okay, so maybe ask them to reach out to you via, let's say, your email address. Okay, so this is what I meant. This is what about summary is, is, is for you to do. Okay, and of course, add in your experience. Add in your education, your license and certification, if any. Your volunteering experience, if any. Okay, you can do that. And the next part is skills. Now, when it comes to skills, right, you can see skills here. This is something that I want to bring to your attention. Not so sure if you're uh, here of, uh, I think, news last year that talks about skills-based hiring. Have you all, do you all recall this thing called skills-based hiring? Oh, I forgot to record. Skills-based hiring. So what the hell is skills-based hiring? <laughs> <laughs> hire you based on your skills all right obviously quite the right but how do they assess your skills so mom actually had a tie up with linkedin to say that okay let's do this skills based hiring so how does how do someone or a man or, or, or a company employer know that you have these skills so you need to demonstrate your skills by taking assessment so if most, if any one of you, in fact, I will encourage all of you all to look at these skills. So how do you demonstrate your skills? So you, all you need to do is demonstrate skills. Okay, and can you see this thing called skills assessment? Okay, you are seeing it, right? So this skills assessment is where they talk about skills-based hiring. Now, I'll encourage all of you to go and do all these skills assessment depending on your depending on your profession. If let's say you're a technical person, there will be some technical tools there like Java, like CSS, like C++. If uh, you're an accountant, you use a lot of Excel, that's Excel. There is also PowerPoint. There is also things like Adobe, you know, if you're a designer, Photoshop, right? All those stuff, all those are skills-based assessment. So go and do them, okay? They are free. Okay, premium account or not is free for you to do it and you can you can fail multiple times and still <laughs> do it finally. The only thing is that I think you only have maximum two two chances. If you fail two times, you have to wait for a couple of months before you can do it again. Okay, but no matter what, it is free. Okay, so go and do all these skills assessment. Now, how is it important in the in the space of job search? It is important because if let's say a particular job post has required that skill and then you have the skills batch because you pass the skills assessment, they will notify you that, hey, this job is suitable for you. Okay, now when that happens, you get notified firsthand and maybe you will tend to stand out among, amongst the rest of the applicant as well. All right, so go and do this skill assessment, guys. It's free. All right, it's free. You can fail and fail and fail and do it again. 
as I said, the only thing is I think you have maximum two times consecutively. And if you fail the second time, you have to wait a few months before you, you know, do the same test again. But it's free. You are not required to pay anything. Even for non-premium account, you have access to this. All right. So go and do it. All right. Okay, so that is what I was talking about when it comes to skills-based assessment. Okay, and this is how you can maximize your, your LinkedIn to help you. Right, so I was talking about, where, where is it, where is it? There you go. Uh, yes, skills. This is this segment. All right, so a few things that you all need to work on. Okay, I'm just talking and typing at the same time. Uh, your headline. Okay, you need to make sure that you have a good about summary. You need to make sure that you include your working experience. You need to include your education or certifications. All right. And you need to include your skills. All right. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, five, right? One, two, three, four. These are the five things that you need to have on your LinkedIn profile. And if your LinkedIn profile is not updated, it's not, it's not done up. All right, guys, go and do it. It's free. All right. All the recruiters, headhunters, talent acquisitions are there. If you want, uh, you want to be headhunted, you cannot not be seen by them. So can you please be seen by them? Create and create a profile that you can write things that you want people to read. Now, you know, take that control back. Okay. So you just join. You can slowly scroll your profile. So I can see. <laughs> Okay, you want to see, you can actually slowly see on your phone. Okay, why not you just go to my LinkedIn itself. Okay, my LinkedIn is, oh, you can see my LinkedIn address there. Okay, so just search for me. Okay, and then you can see my profile. And um, yeah, you don't have to copy ex exactly what I do because we have different career paths. And you know what, we have different focus, we have different target audience, right? But what you should have is whatever that I've shared earlier. Okay, so just go to my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn URL. Uh, and actually, if you can't see it very clearly on the screen, on my profile on TikTok itself, I have my link there. All right, so you just need to click. My social links are all there. Okay, so I hope I answer your question. Okay, so 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 yes, yes, that's a uh, LinkedIn for you. Okay, so I scroll one more time slowly. Okay, so you have your hit your name your headline, okay? And then you have things like your summary, they call it about. You have your experience that you need to include, okay? Your education, your certification, if any, all right? Um, your volunteer experience, if any, but not the most important thing. Uh, and of course, lastly, your skills. If, of course, if there are people who give you endorsement or recommendation, it's also good to have, okay? So that is what the entire profile or LinkedIn profile looks like. So far so good. Okay, let me drink some water. Now, I'm doing this group coaching for the first time because I just want to help as many people as possible, In especially if you're going through a transition, you're thinking of doing a transition or you're affected by the very volatile workforce ever since pandemic started. All right, so if you have any friends who can benefit from this, please share this with them. I, I really don't do this publicly. I My coaching is usually private and my workshops are also private, but I'm just doing it for the first time and hope it benefits as many of you as possible. And these are some fundamentals that you need to have. Okay, you have to have all these fundamentals. If you don't have, don't even talk about job searching. Okay. Now, if you have any questions, I also I will also encourage you to pop them in the chat and I will do my best to answer them. If I see any questions that I can answer immediately, this is the time that I will do so. All right. Meanwhile, I am still on LinkedIn. All right. So for anyone of you who doesn't have a LinkedIn profile or not active on LinkedIn, this is a good time to get active. All right. Now, um, I was running through your main profile. Besides that, you all can go to settings and privacy, okay? Is everyone with me? <laughs> All right, so let's go to settings and privacy and it will ta -da, bring you to this page itself, okay? All right, so what can you do over here? Actually, they are all very self-explanatory, right? Okay, so but I maybe want to bring a few things to your attention so that you are aware that they exist in the first place. 
Now, all of you all just have to go to visibility. Okay, it, it will be good if you are able to do this on the desktop, right? So visibility, there we go. Click on it and this is the page that you will come to. I'm going through slowly so that whoever that is scrolling in, you can catch on with me, all right? So I'm doing about LinkedIn. Maximize your LinkedIn or at least start learning how to use LinkedIn for your job search. Okay, you need to have a place for you to start job searching, right? And LinkedIn could be one potential place for you to get started, all right? Now, if you're on this page already, this is the first thing that I will bring to your attention. It's called profile viewing option. Now, what does this mean? This means that, very simple. Now, sometimes when you look, look on LinkedIn, you may be looking for your interviewer or whatever. Lah, huh? You may be um, yeah, searching for people. And you do not, if you do not want to let other people know that you are looking at them, this is where you can change them. All right, you can change to private mode whereby nobody knows that you look at them. Isn't that good? Okay. But of course, it works both ways. If you can't see who is viewing, uh, if you don't let people see who uh, that you are viewing them, you can't see who is view viewing you as well. All right. So this is the part whereby you can do the setting such that you control, you know, a little bit of control there. All right. So this is the first thing that I want to share with you, which will be useful to some of us because sometimes we a bit uh, pie say, right? uh, we don't want people to know that we are looking at them. Alright, the next part that I want to bring to your attention is this thing called edit your public profile. Shall we all go there? Edit your public profile. Okay, fantastic. We are on this page. I hope you are with me right now. Now, all of you, if you're on this page already, you can see that there's this thing called edit your custom URL on the top right. Can you see on the top right of my screen, there is this thing called edit your custom URL. All right, and you can see that you can personalize the URL for your profile. So if your LinkedIn profile, if you see your URL at the back, right, it's a string of weird numbers. This is the place whereby you can edit. So how to edit, just click on the pencil and edit. And maybe I'll encourage you to create a URL that, that is meaningful. Okay, don't, don't make a joke out of your URL. That's what I'm saying, because after all, this is a professional site, right? You may attach them on your resume. So you do want to look professional. Okay, all right. So this is the part whereby you can edit your URL. After, after that, when you scroll down, okay, you realize that there are a few things that you cannot change. Your name, your number of connection, and your region. These are the things that you cannot hide. Meaning to say anyone in the public can view it. You cannot switch it off, okay? All right, so that is something that you can't control. But the rest of the things are things that you can control. For example, profile photo. Maybe you only want your first degree connection to be able to see your profile photo. Anyone who is not your direct connection cannot see how you look like. As simple as that. Okay, so this is where you can do the change. Now, if any one of you are doing job searching, okay, you are actively expanding your network, you do want to connect with people, my minimum suggestion is please make sure that you switch it to all LinkedIn members to at least be able to see your profile photo. Okay, so usually for me, I just put it public. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Okay, it's just my profile photo anyway, right? So the reason why I say that is because if you are networking, you are connecting with people, think about it. If you are the recipient receiving a connection request and you cannot see the person's face, how likely are you to accept the connection? Think about it. How likely are you to accept the connection? Is it high or is it low? Okay, so across so many people I've coached, the general census is if they cannot see who the person is, they will usually not accept the connection request. All right, so that is basic normal uh, human behavior. So with that in mind, if you are searching for jobs, you are actively connecting, I will encourage you to switch on your profile photo so that has made, so that people can view who you are and they will be more willing to accept your connection, more willing to talk to you. Okay? You can switch it off if let's say you know you you, you are not actively expanding your network. Okay? Yeah. All right, so there we go. Okay, so that's your profile photo. 
Now everything else here that you see on the right hand side, you see like there's a toggle button, right? This is where you can take a little bit of control back. You can you can determine what you want the public to see. Okay, if you want them to see, you just turn it on and it's like a green button. If you don't want them to see, just turn it off, you hide it. Okay, so this is a page whereby you can do a little bit of control. So that's why, that's why I'm sharing this page because I think it can be useful to some of us. The reason why I think it can be useful to some of us is also because some of us are just not socially active. We just don't want to leave too much digital footprints or we are just not active in general, we're just not active. And that's perfectly okay. Okay, you just want to have that privacy, you just don't want to post anything and whatever whatever it is okay so this is where you can take a little bit of control back you can choose to hide things that you don't want the public to see okay yeah all right anyone got any question i've been talking and talking actually this is how a dj feels like i think if they just keep talking and talking it can be quite tiring so if you have any question <laughs> please ask me okay because this is my this is my last session doing a group coaching live i don't do coaching uh, publicly like this uh, yeah so most of my sessions are private okay so um, in fact if anyone of you want me to view uh, to <laughs> give feedback on your LinkedIn profile I can do it like right now provided you don't mind that people are looking at your profile all right cool cool Okay, so there you go. That is uh, some settings for your LinkedIn that I wanted to share and I hope it's of use to all of you who has just tuned in. Okay, let's go to job search. The best way, one of my favorite tools is actually Google, which I'm at Google now. Okay, so y'all can see that I am on my main Google page. Now to look for a job, pretty much is quite simple, it's quite straightforward. I like to use this thing. Okay, so just click jobs. Just follow with me first. Huh? Click jobs in the search bar. And you will see this thing. Can y'all see this thing that is right in front of me or right in front of you right now? There is this jobs and color. Okay, <laughs> so you know where I stay. Okay, I stay around color. Okay, anyway. <laughs> jobs. Okay, so what I want you to do is click on this and it will lead you to this page. Ta-da! Okay. Now, at this page, Hey, I saw a question in the chat. Um, curious about how to make my profile look better. Are you talking about profile photo or the entire profile? Okay, so I, 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 I need to clarify what's your question. Okay, so the quality of your questions determine the quality of your life. <laughs> and I really stand by it. If you ask good questions, you get good response and that will help you. So why do I talk about this? Because if let's say you are intending to go for job interviews, the questions that you ask your interviewers will determine what kind of response and answer that your interviewer give back to you. So the quality of the question is important. So for this, it's the Chris man. All right, you ask how to make your profile look better. Are you talking about your entire LinkedIn profile or your profile photo? Okay, only when you answer my question, I can answer your question. Profile, profile. <laughs> okay, what the hell is profile, profile? <laughs> okay, so I assume that profile means your entire profile page. Huh? Okay, so it's not about look. I think rather than making it look better, you should make it look relevant. Okay, so the keyword here is making your profile, profile <laughs> look relevant. Okay, so relevant will mean, are, are you, when someone reads your profile, so it's a very simple question, when someone reads your profile, do they know what you are good at? Do they know what the hell you are doing? Do they know your, your key skills? Do they know your competence? If they read your profile, they still blur, huh? what is this person doing? Huh? Then it is not a good profile. So the gist of making a profile good is not making fancy full words or bombastic words or what's not, that is not how we determine whether a profile is good. A profile is good if it's relevant, if it, if it tells a story that people understand. So when I read your profile, I must know what you are good at. I must know, understand your experience. I must know what you are doing. 
in your career or in your work. All right, so that's the framework. That's the answer to your question. I hope it helps. So what you can do is get a few people to read your profile and then get some feedback. If they don't understand what you're doing or what you're writing, then that profile, you need to improve on it. All right. If they understand, then yes, your profile is sort of on the right way. Okay. Thank you for the roses. <laughs> okay. Ken. So uh, yes, I was halfway through this. Now, this is one place that I like to use when it comes to job search. Reason being, you all know that Google cross information from everywhere, anywhere, right? And sometimes one of the frustration that job seekers face is that when they apply job A on portal, on portal A, let's say they apply a job on portal A, they see similar job on portal B, portal C, and portal D. They're not so sure if they are the same job or do they, should they apply, keep applying, should I spam application? Okay, now I like to use this because it helps to consolidate. Let me show you how they consolidate. So for example, I'm looking for a job. Let's say I'm looking for project manager. Now can you all see that I use this open inverted commas, whatever sign you call them. This one means that only return me results if I have both the word project manager. Okay, if you do this, okay, if you do it without the quotation sign, right, if you just do like this project manager, what it means that the results that come back to you, if there's project or there is manager, you will get the result. And you know, if you are job searching, you might, you, you may want to be specific and targeted, right? And having to scroll through millions, maybe a bit too exaggerated, maybe have to, having to scroll through hundreds of job description is going to be very tiring so usually i'm very specific okay i can even i can be even more specific i can even say that and i just want logistic okay if if any of this fail don't give me the result that's basically what i'm saying okay all right so i'll do a search hit my enter button and there you go now can you see for example this guy says that okay project manager logistic you can apply on monster portal okay if I look at project manager, marine time or logistic, so you realize that again, if I'm specific in my search, I get good, I get good results. Okay. Now, can you see that for this particular job, I can apply on four different job portal, my careers, future, monster, grab jobs and job wiz. Now this saves you a lot of time, isn't it? You don't have to wonder whether it is the same kind of job. So you can just focus on, let's say, oh, I just want to focus on applying via my career's future. All right. So this is one portal that I really like, which isn't a portal at all. It's just a search engine, which is Google search engine. All right. So you can even, let's say, date posted, right? So this is where you can do your filter, let's say, over the past one week. So you realize that you have very specific job search, uh, job results. Okay, you may even choose, uh, yeah. Now, of course, my search result don't have to be N, it can be all also. So maybe project manager or right, project uh, specialist. No, I think special project engineer. Okay, something like that. Okay. There you go. So either project manager or project engineer Give me the result, then your results become very specific. Okay, so sometimes you can also be okay. Let's not talk about project manager. Maybe let's talk about accountant or maybe auditor. Okay, so you can do that, right? Auditor, auditor. Then you get the result. Either accountant or auditor. I want to see the result. Okay, again, I can use N. Maybe accountant. Usually I will do this, the role in a specific sector or industry. So maybe accountant in finance. There you go. All right. So I have just do a simple demonstration on how to use this simple Google to consolidate, to, you know, see whether, you know, just see the job post. Okay. Do you just apply on one platform? Okay. Good question. Now I will use on average about three platforms. So the first one, I will use this Google search to let me know the appearance of all the jobs. That's number one. 
okay number two personally i will definitely use linkedin okay because that's where i can find the relevant people to connect and that's one of the most important thing in job search if you are applying jobs via you know cold market that means just apply through portals there is a very high chance that your 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 application can be missed up or uh, in my very first co group coaching session which you can see on youtube i talk about if your resume do not pass the applicant tracking system ats you may not be seen as well so i will definitely also attempt to reach out on linkedin because i can find relevant people to connect with so that's the second platform now the third platform is up to you some people they will use indeed some people they will use monster if you are based in singapore some people will use my careers future okay so the good thing about uh, my careers future is that i'm talking to those who are based in singapore eh? give me one second guys i need to charge my laptop in case you're okay cool all right let's see my careers future okay now my careers future um, this is job banks this is singapore job bank so if you are tuning in from other countries you will have your local country job banks please go and figure which one it is in your respective country so again okay one thing good about this is that they give you the salary range that's the only thing good about this site <laughs> i feel oh my god okay if there's anyone from wsg that is tuning in i'm so sorry <laughs> Anyway, this is under MOM. Okay, anyway, I'm not here to discuss all this. I'm just sharing with you various platforms. All right, so first one, I will use the Google, which I shared with, which I just demonstrate how to use it to see all the various jobs from various portals. The second one that I will confirm use is LinkedIn. And the third one is up to you. Okay, it could be My Career Future, it could be Indeed, Monster. And I think these are the few prominent ones, right? Oh, okay. There is maybe even Job Street and Job Central. I don't think they they are still around, but may not be as uh, their job posts may not be as uh, maybe different kind of job posts, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so that is to answer the question. I hope you are still here. Okay. Anyone has any question? I still have twenty minutes with you guys. Okay, thank you. Good question. Okay, all right. So these are the few things that I went through today using this to help you to consolidate um, a job bank or and also on LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, to look for jobs is actually just via the jobs, right? Okay, so this is where you can, you can search. So let's do the same thing, right? Accountant. So what this thing that I'm doing here is called the Boolean search. Huh? So there's a term for it, accountant and anybody in what kind of industry we like, education, right? Why not talk about education? Okay, and Singapore, for example. Okay, so when you do this, so I want to be a accountant in education. All right, so you can see that you have, can you see on this side, there's 1,328 searches. And then over here, there is a set alert. Now, so this is how you can set alert on LinkedIn. All right, so whatever job, whatever search that you have created, you can create a alert so that whenever there is relevant roles, you will be notified. Okay, so for myself, I am not going to, I'm usually looking at past one week. So from 1002, it becomes 900. So it's a lot easier, right? Okay, then you can you can use this based on whichever level you are at. Okay, and okay, so just scroll down and see what works for you and what doesn't. Now you can see that, let's say for this guy, senior consultant, okay? Meet the hiring team. Please connect with this gentleman because he has openly show, he, show you that, okay, you can connect with him. <laughs> Okay, so that's how you network, all right? So but I'm not I'm not talking about networking today. Okay, so you can actually even use this to understand about the organization. So let's look at this organization called the Gap Partnership. 
Okay, so you know that this is based in this particular state, country. Alright, so you can go and understand more about this company itself. Okay, about what they do. Okay, they are a consulting firm, the job, the post, etc. Okay, you can even see who worked there. There you go. Okay, so these are the people who work there. Okay, and then you find the right people that you may want to connect with. Alright, so that's how you use LinkedIn job. Okay, and set alert. So if you're on the desktop right now, you can do you can you can set some job alerts for yourself. All right. Okay, good question. All right. Uh, your current job, you are a cabin crew. So what is relevant? Okay, so can you tell? So you need to ask yourself a few questions. You know what are some of the skills that 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 you do possess now that make you make you good at what you do as a cabin crew. So first of first half, cabin crew, you are in the service line, right? So service line, you may be talking about client facing role. So client facing roles will be something that is suitable for you. Yeah, that's great. You you know it, customer service. So any client facing role may be something that you can start looking into. So what kind of roles are client facing roles? So it could be from customer service, it could be to account management. Okay, so account management means to say you handle accounts. Like that means you are also maintaining relationships. So a step further, customer service, that's one. Handling customers means you also need to build relationship. Okay, so building relationship is something that you may be good at. So that's why account management may be something that you can consider because it's a client-facing role. Sales, business development is a client-facing role. It requires you to build relationship, all right? But provided that you like sales lah, huh? Uh, what else? Customer service. What else? What other skills do you think you have that make you good at doing what you're currently doing as a cabin crew besides customer service? Come on. Give me one more. Yes, hospitality and tourism. So hospitality and tourism is the sector. So sector means industry. Okay, so currently you are in aviation. Okay, because you are you are you are, you are in in that airspace, but aviation yours is combined with. Okay, so hospitality and tourism is a place that you can venture into, hotels, right? Um, tours. It's <laughs> consider that right. Okay, good. So don't mix up your role versus the sector. So hospitality and tourism is sector. Customer service is a skill. So what other skills? Heat up meal, first aid. <laughs> oh my god, you need to, you know, you, you, I mean, yes, those are good stuff, okay? There's actually one more that I think you, you forgot. Crisis management. Come on, guys, give yourself some credit here. I'm really good at giving people credit because I work with people who are transiting from cabin crew to other roles actually. Yeah, couple of them, especially during pandemic, right? You guys can't fly. <laughs> All right, crisis management. Hello, you guys are trained to manage crisis very well. That is a skill. What else are you good at? You are damn good at managing diff difficult customers, isn't it? I'm sure you meet interesting customers on the airplane. There will be nice customers, there will be customers that are a little bit more challenging, that you need to get creative to solve the situation. Come on, give yourself a bit more credit here, all right? So that is a few transferable skills that you can sell. Okay, so remember that, all right? So this is as much as I can do online like that, <laughs> based on what you have shared with me, okay? I hope it makes sense to you because this is exactly what you do in your job. So give yourself some credit. And I think this goes the same to everyone else who is tuning in right now. Whatever your role is, that is something that you do that is meaningful, that it makes a difference. All right. It's just that you you didn't know about it. So I'm pointing out, pointing it out to you that you are good at that. All right. Yeah. Exactly. Look at this. There's so much. There's this encouragement here. You know, you guys are good at handling difficult customers. Kudos to you. Yes, kudos to you. I don't think I have the patience for it. All right. I yeah. I definitely don't have patience for difficult customers. I I, I go and go and handle yourself. 
<laughs> okay, all right, good, good question. Okay, anyone else have any question? You guys have me, have, have me for the next 10 minutes. Okay, I, I don't think I'm going through any more technical stuff. All right, so I, I went through LinkedIn, how to get started on your LinkedIn. All right, I also went through how can you use um, LinkedIn to search for jobs, use Google to search for jobs. Yeah, okay, so just put all these small little things into practice and you'll be surprised that compounded effect uh, efforts like this will bring you results that you don't expect all right okay cool actually there's someone who asked me a question in one of my videos but i'm not so sure if she's here uh, she talks about she's in hr and um yeah if you are here let me know yeah then i can answer you otherwise no point for me answering when you're not here thank you for the donut <laughs> okay now do you recommend do you recommend to use the skills future for courses? Yes, use it. The money is there for you to use. Why you don't want to use? What kind of question is this? <laughs> or are you asking me what courses should you do? Okay, guys, you all need to learn to ask better questions. Asking better questions will give you better response and answers. All right. <laughs> okay. Should you use skills future for courses? Yes. Please use them. I do not know how much all of us have because different age got different amount of money. But, but go and use them okay and if you're not so sure where you can get started this is obviously where you can go and check it out right skills future yeah. i just want to let you all know i'm not promoting skills future or whatever i'm just telling you what are some of the resources out there that all of us can use because there are so many times whereby i come across people who don't know that all these are available to them yeah, just go to myskillsfuture.gov.sg and, and there you go, causes, programs, and resources. Okay, so causes and programs, okay, search for whatever cause that is relevant for you. Resources, all these things are free, by the way, all right? Just log in with your SingPass. Okay, all these things are free. You can even do personal like, uh, assessment tools. There are some assessment tools for you to use, uh, articles, industry insights. So, start from somewhere this is a good place to get started because it's available to everyone so long as you have a working internet so no one has any reason why you cannot find any sort of resources or help okay if anyone who anyone tells me that i'm just going to tell you straight in your face you are just plain lazy you are just not looking in the right direction okay because you have a working internet you should be able to assess resources easily compared to at least like maybe a decade ago all right, so this is a good place to get started. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I get very, you know, I get very, you know, agitated, excited when people tell me that, you know, I don't know where to get to get for help. There are so many places that you can get for help, right, guys? Go and use them. All right. You just need to be resourceful enough. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions for me? If there's no questions, I would really, you know, just shout out to all of you. That is something every one of you are doing good work yourself. And one thing to know that you are doing good work is you need to learn to quantify your achievement. You, you need to be able to understand the value that you bring to the organization, bring to the community with the work that you do. Every one of us are bringing in value. But the reason why we do not know the value that we bring is because we never spend enough time to understand the value that we can bring. Okay, we never learn to see the impact of our work. So your bosses is not going to do that for you, by the way. Your bosses is not going to tell you that, hey, you know, you are good at this. Most bosses can't do that because most bosses or most managers, supervisors, for example, they are also struggling, all right? <laughs> everyone is all right so in order to help yourself please learn to look a little bit more in depth about the work that you do learn to see the the value the impact through the work that you do and quantify it and that would be good for your resume by the way so a simple example was what we did earlier on right you know we have this uh this this participant who is a cabin crew and you know you never thought that you have so many other skills besides customer service you'll be so surprised all right okay and of course if you want to i write a lot i write a lot on linkedin so you guys can follow me on linkedin okay you can read my articles you can read my my posts uh, you can follow me on tiktok as well uh, i do my best to do more videos but i'm not the best at it but i'm doing my best 
all right so um yeah it's easy to find me on social various social media so do follow me if it makes sense for you all right okay last five minutes anyone any other question that i can help <laughs> thank you for the donuts thank you for the likes thank you for the flowers that you guys have been show, sh uh, showering on me i feel so loved on a rainy night <laughs> like tonight okay Okay, anyone? Any other question? Okay, so um, this video will be recorded. I mean, it is recorded. So what is happening is that I will be downloading it and up and upload it onto YouTube itself. So in any case, you need to draw some reference. You can just refer to the YouTube and it will be under the category called live sessions. Okay, all right. So in case you need a reference, because I probably won't be doing this anytime soon. So it's readily available online please go and use it okay okay um yeah i think that's that's all for the evening i've been i've been talking the whole night for the past one hour okay any other question is the is the is the person who asked me that question in one of my video here the one that you talk about you are a hr professional and you took a career break to for maternity you took you know you were away on maternity are you here if you're here i'll answer your question if you're not here i i won't answer obviously okay <laughs> if you're here just let me like drop a yes okay otherwise i'm, I'm not gonna reply cool all right thank you for entertaining me like how i've been entertaining you doing this live is really a different thing man i think something to learn mm -hmm. no question no question nobody any question okay if no question please follow me okay how whichever platform you like to follow me is all in my bio on my profile on tiktok please go and help yourself all of you are very resourceful you know where to find me please go do that all right and um, maybe i should you know is this and you can see me bigger i'm trying to figure this so i'm using tiktok live studio so i think they are in their beta version so it's something like uh o obs obs osb obs yeah something like that yeah so um yeah it looks like it's working fine and i have a very big pimple here oh my god okay all right guys any last question before i close today's session with two more minutes i'm closing this at nine o'clock sharp okay any other questions that you want to check in with me anything related to career okay i'll do my best to answer and just to let all of y'all know i'm a career coach by practice uh, i'm a career practitioner all right so i help a lot of working professions in terms of transiting to the next phase of their uh, phase of their career I also help my clients to achieve breakthroughs in your performance, right? So that's what I do in my day job. And that is the reason why I'm here tonight to share with you some of the fundamental, simple things that can get you guys started without any resource, no, without any like external help. And you can do it for free, you know, the resources that I've shared, the tips and strategies that I've shared in over the past one hour are things that you can use, yeah? Mm, okay. Cool. no question fantastic i love this crowd okay thank you so much for all the gifts <laughs> the likes the donuts you are making me feel very hungry right now <laughs> okay yeah and uh, the roses i think i received some roses as well okay cool all right so thank you everyone thanks for coming in all right so uh, again the video will be downloaded i'll be uploading it on youtube so if you have missed out anything or you need a recap of whatever that i've covered tonight please go onto my youtube and stream it at your own time at your own pace all right if there's no other question i'm going to close off my night tonight uh which, wishing all of your abundance good health um remember that the work that you do has an impact to your community all right so learn to quantify learn to quantify the impact of your work don't wait for your managers your leaders your bosses to do that for you because everyone is busy all right so the only person who can do that for you is yourself 
So learn to quantify it and it will help you in your resume and you will be even happier in your job because you get to see the direct impact that you made to the environment. Not when I talk about environment, I'm talking about the macro space. All right. So, all right. Good night, everyone. Or good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. So I'll see you very soon. I'll see you on LinkedIn, on TikTok, on Instagram, whichever platform you prefer. All right. Ta-da.